Coming up, we take a look at the progress along the full route of Brightline's expansion to Orlando. Since June of 2019, Brightline has been building their second phase, which will connect South Florida to Orlando, and in August 2021, construction reached 63% complete. As some background, Brightline is a privately operated express intercity passenger rail service operating in Florida that began service on the existing route between Miami and West Palm Beach in 2018. They operate modern, higher-speed trains that offer frequent, high-quality service across two classes of seating, smart and select. We'll start at Orlando International Airport, which will be home to the Orlando Station and work south from there. We'll start at the south end of the airport at the Future Vehicle Maintenance Facility. This will be the primary maintenance facility for Brightline's trains when service to Orlando begins. This building is the main shop with three tracks and a separate locomotive shop. The site will also feature a wheel touring machine, wash rack, and storage tracks. Everything here is being built so that it can be easily expanded as Brightline's fleet and operations grow. The Orlando Station will be inside Orlando International Airport's intermodal terminal that is part of the new Terminal C complex. Inside the terminal, Brightline Station will be located where this wall on the right currently is. It is just a short walk to the Terminal C Automated People Mover, which provides access to the airport's main terminal. Looking out the north end of the terminal, tracks have started being laid down the earthen ramp to wind through the airport. From the automated people mover, you can see the two tracks leaving the station. Signals have also been installed here. Here you can see one track has been laid and ballasted, and the second is progressing as well. This specialized tiling excavator between airsides 2 and 4 is leading the track construction efforts. A crossover is being built here, which will allow trains to switch between the two main lines. The signals and associated bungalows have been installed so far. A new underpass is being built under Cargo Road here. Half of the new bridge is being built at a time, so the road can stay open for traffic throughout construction. Now at the north end of the airport, the tracks will curve to follow State Road 528 East. Here you can see the right-of-way curve as it prepares to pass under Goldenrod Road through a tunnel. Having left the airport property, we will now look at the all-new route being constructed between the airport and Coco following the south side of State Road 528. Just east of the airport is Narcusi Road and one of the most complex parts of this project. The tracks have to cross over an exit ramp, Narcusi Road, and thread their way between an apartment complex and the 528 while also crossing the entrance ramp. The bridge beams over Narcusi Road were recently installed, and beams are preparing to be installed over the entrance ramp in the distance. Moving east, here is the bridge over State Road 417. Beams have been installed across this entire interchange, and subroad bed is being spread on the ramps leading to it. From the airport to just east of this bridge, the route will be double tracked. The route will reduce to a single track from here to Coco, with room to be double tracked in the future as service grows. Near the Innovation Way exit, 
Brightline's tracks will cross the Orlando Utilities Commission's Stanton Rail Line, which CSX used to access the Stanton Energy Center. A connection is being built here so construction supplies can be delivered by rail. Here's a closer look at that bridge. You can see the tracks heading west from here, passing under Innovation Way through special underpasses that were built with Brightline's route in mind. Now at Dallas Boulevard, the single track bridge has been constructed with room for future road widening projects in mind. This is also an opportunity to show that while this section of the route will initially be single track, accommodations are being made now so the second half can easily be built in the future when this section of the line is double tracked. In historical terms, Dallas Boulevard is built on the former right-of-way of the Florida East Coast Railway's former Kissimmee Valley Line. That line was abandoned in the 1940s and was eventually converted to this road. Signals are also going up along this section of the line. This is an intermediate signal that was installed just east of Dallas Boulevard. The heads will remain turned like this until they are eventually activated. Here's a section of roadbed ready for track near the Dallas Toll Plaza. And another intermediate signal with solar panels for power. Here's another section near State Road 520 that is ready for track. Fencing is currently being built along this section of the right-of-way. At State Road 520, work has been focused on getting the pilings in place for the future bridge. The ramp leading to the western side is mostly complete. Past State Road 520, the tracks shift to a right-of-way leased from the Florida Department of Transportation that is directly next to the road the rest of the way to Coco. This is the bridge over Second Creek where work is progressing on the bridge deck. The same is true at Jim Creek. Work on the bridge over the St. Johns River is progressing with piling still being installed. The associated embankments are nearing completion as well. Now in Brevard County, work is focused on building up the right-of-way for the tracks and installing retaining walls as needed. Box culverts are being installed for several drainage canals to flow through. Near the Interstate 95 interchange, the bridge over Pine Street is ready to have beams installed. We are now following the embankment east toward the bridge over Interstate 95. Twenty-four beams have recently been installed across the interstate. These beams will eventually support two tracks across the road. Just east of the Interstate 95 bridge is the Coco Arch Panel Tunnel. It will take the tracks under a new State Road 528 alignment so that the tracks will be along the north side of the road. 125 panels were cast on site and installed here. The 528 is currently using a temporary alignment called a shoe fly to get around the construction. Here is the alignment the tracks will follow after passing through the tunnel up to Industry Road in the distance. The route goes over Industry Road here, then enters the Coco Curve, where it turns south to go back under State Road 528. Here is the Coco Tunnel under State Road 528 
which was installed using a method called box jacking in March 2021. Work has progressed here to clean up the site and to start preparing the roadbed. The next section we will look at is between Coco and Melbourne. After exiting the Coco Tunnel, the tracks will join into the existing Florida East Coast Railway corridor for the rest of the route. Brightline and the Florida East Coast Railway freight trains will share the upgraded double track corridor from here to Miami. The two tracks leading to Orlando will be built to the right of the existing main line here, while an additional track heading north will be built to the left of it. The Orlando line joins in just past Michigan Avenue in the distance. Near Gus Hip Boulevard on Rockledge, ties have been laid out for the second main line. The Gus Hip Crossing was rebuilt recently to add the second track and upgrade the crossing protection. Looking north at the Bonaventure Industrial Area near Vieira, ties have also been laid for the new main line. The siding on the left will be extended to provide the local freight with more room to work without blocking the main line. We are now looking south at Bonaventure. The existing siding will be extended slightly and will enter the main line just past this new signal. A new crossover known as CP South Bonaventure will be built here. The crossover will allow trains to switch between the tracks as needed. Moving to Suntree Boulevard, ties are laid south toward the Pineda Causeway. Moving into Melbourne, and work is progressing on the replacement of the bridge over the O'Galley River. Crews have been building a temporary truss it'll work off of and have started installing the pilings for the first part of the new double track bridge here. This old bridge, which is almost 100 years old, will end up being demolished. In downtown Melbourne, crews have been working on upgrading the crossings to add the second track as well as installing new crossing protection. They are working on the Strawbridge Avenue crossing here. Also in downtown Melbourne is the Crane Creek Bridge. This bridge is also being replaced and the first track in the new bridge is under construction. A temporary work trestle was also installed here for the cranes to work from. Several of the spans have been installed and work is progressing on the bridge deck. These bridges are being built with a ballasted deck, so crews are currently working to build the trough that will hold the ballast. Moving farther south, our next section is Palm Bay to Vero Beach. At Turkey Creek, work recently began on the temporary work trestle here as preparations to replace this old bridge begin. In Valkyria at Goat Creek, the first half of the new bridge has been completed and is now in service. Crews are now working to remove the old bridge to build the second half of the new one in its place. A short section of the new track was put into service for trains to use across the bridge. In Miko, crews recently installed and activated the new CP Miko crossover. You can see the crews moving a section of one of the new turnouts into place here. Here is the finished crossover. On the Brevard Indian River County line is the Sebastian River and the Roseland Trussell across it. 
This is the largest bridge being replaced as part of this project. Crews built a temporary trestle all the way across the river, so two cranes can be working simultaneously. The first beams for the new bridge have been installed here on the north end. Crews are now working on installing pilings for the new bridge as they also begin demolishing the old one. Work in Indian River County is still in the clearing and grubbing phase. Here near Gifford, crews are still clearing brush from the right-of-way. As piles build up, a mulcher is brought in to turn it into mulch, which is then loaded into trailers to be taken away. While the clearing is going on, signal crews have begun working on the crossings and are installing new crossing protection ahead of adding the second track. We'll now move on to progress in St. Lucie County. Here near Andrea Road, crews are also continuing with the brush clearing work. Crews are also beginning to run some of the fiber optic lines that will be used by the signal system. Crossing protection upgrades are also ongoing here in advance of the second track getting added. Several pieces of continuous welded rail are laid along the main line here. These will be used on the new main line as well as replacing some of the existing main line. At Taylor Creek on the north side of Fort Pierce, the new double track bridge is complete. A new section of mainline was built on one side, with the other side ready to have track laid. The mainline alignment was adjusted during the building of the bridge here, but it will be returned to how it was once the second mainline is built here. Beyond this bridge, not much has been done in Fort Pierce proper, so our next stop is south of town here at Midway Road. A three-track signal bridge was recently installed here. An extended lead into the Fort Pierce yard is being built here along with the additional main line. Just past the signal is where that lead will rejoin the main line at the new CP White City crossover. A little farther south near Walton Road provides another look at the right-of-way. In the distance is the future CP Port St. Lucie crossover. Martin County is up next. At the Rayo Waterway, the first half of the new bridge is complete and in service. Pilings are about to start being installed for the second half of the bridge. The new second main line was put in service across the bridge and extends almost all the way to the Stewart Draw Bridge. Work in downtown Stewart has been minimal, but just south of town, new ties are laid out on sub roadbed. In Port Salerno, work has recently begun on a short bridge over the Manatee Tributary, with pilings currently being installed. A few miles south along Southeast Dixie Highway, more ties are being laid on the recently completed subroad bed. You can see rail attached to the ties here. Work is beginning to rebuild crossings in this area to add the second track. Petway Street is being completed here. Ties are laid in Hobe Sound, and the Gleason Street crossing on the south end of town was recently rebuilt. 
The new crossing protection is wrapped in plastic until it is ready to be activated. Next up is Northern Palm Beach County around Jupiter and Palm Beach Gardens. The Jupiter Drawbridge over the Loxatchee River is the busiest work site in this area currently. Instead of completely replacing this bridge like at other locations, this one is only being partially replaced. The pilings will be reused, but everything above them, including the spans, bascule segment, and mechanism will be replaced with new parts. This is also being done while the bridge remains open for daily freight traffic. Instead of building a temporary trestle all the way across the river here, most of the work here is being done from barges, of which they are building one here. Now in Jupiter, the rest of the route to West Palm Beach is mostly complete, with some of the tracks scheduled to be put into service in September 2021. Behind the bushes here is the new CP Jupiter crossover. Most of the route between West Palm Beach and Cocoa, including this area, will support passenger speeds up to 110 miles per hour. This structure will hold a future high wide defect detector. Our last segment is Palm Beach Gardens to downtown West Palm Beach. The curve here along alternate A1A was brought in to allow higher speeds, bringing the track slightly closer to the edge of the right-of-way and road here. At the Earman River, the existing single-track bridge was in good enough condition to continue to be used, so crews only had to build a single-track bridge here which is now complete. The new bridge has a ballasted deck, while the old one is of a more traditional design. There was another major realignment to the right here to broaden this curve. The new tracks will join into a section of the existing FEC double track just past North Lake Boulevard in the distance. This is the new Lake Park crossover installed in the existing double track here to increase operational flexibility. An extended lead track for the Port of Palm Beach means a third track is being built here at 45th Street. One of the final places the trains will pass on the way to the West Palm Beach station is Workshop B. Brightline's running repair facility. This is currently where Brightline's trains are stored and maintained and will service trains between runs once service to Orlando begins. And here's the end of the phase two construction, the West Palm Beach station, which is the northern terminus for their current South Florida operations. It won't be long until these trains are on their way to Orlando. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this overview, be sure to subscribe to see my more detailed updates. Also check out my social media pages 